2014, the year of Obamacare has arrived. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Bowling in tonight for Sean. Coverage on the new Obamacare marketplaces kicked off yesterday, and the individual mandate is indeed now the law of the land. But to say that the future of this train wreck remains uncertain would be a monumental understatement because already horror stories are pouring in from around the country. For example, a Houston area hospital is blaming Obamacare for its inability to pay 150 of its employees for nearly a month. The CEO of St. Anthony's Hospital says the contractor responsible for building healthcare.gov's financial management system is delaying payments to hospitals. As a result, doctors and nurses are learning the hard way that if they like their paychecks, they can't keep them, period. Sadly, there are reports of this happening all over America, but medical professionals aren't the only ones being impacted by this nightmare because 11 short months from now, a day of reckoning for Obamacare will arrive and the lawmakers who helped pass the Affordable Care Act will be held accountable. In fact, conservative groups are already looking forward to midterm elections just today. Americans for Prosperity launched a major ad campaign targeting three Senate Democrats. Kay Hagan in North Carolina, Mary Landrew in Louisiana, and Jean Shaheen in New Hampshire. Watch. I'm Sheila Salter. I was shocked when I got the notice that my health care policy was canceled. Kay Hagan told us if you like your insurance plan and your doctors, you could keep them. That just wasn't true. Now I have a temporary policy that cost me 20% more. Next year under Obamacare, my costs go up another $4,500. Kay Hagan, she just doesn't get it. Tell Kay Hagan, Obamacare hurts North Carolina. Much more on Obamacare in just a minute, but first there's another milestone to report on in 2014 because at the year's end, Congress let a package of 55 popular tax breaks expire even though they help save average Americans and businesses billions of dollars. To find out more about this decision to raise your taxes, you can head over to the Hannity Facebook page. And as always, we want to hear from you over the course of the next hour on Twitter using the hashtag Hannity. Joining me now to talk about the arrival of, Ob of Obamacare and those expiring tax breaks from the Government Accountability Institute, Peter Schweitzer, and the Third Way Senior VP and co-founder, Jim Kessler. Peter, I want to start with you. Let's start with Obamacare first. Uh, boy, the horror stories. Part of the, the marketplaces was we're holding back some of the payments to the institutions. Pretty soon we're going to hear more and more of these stories, are we not? Yes, we are. And, you know, here's the reality, Eric, is uh, a lot of people say, well, this is a, a problem with implementation. The fact is that Obamacare is basically doing what it was designed to do, uh, which is to drive people into a certain select number of insurance uh, uh, programs. And, of course, the ins uh, insurance industry likes this. So, you know, when people say it's a failure of implementation, it's not. This is what it's designed to do. And you're quite right. It's only going to get worse. We're dealing right now with the individual mandate. 4.7 million people have lost their coverage, according to Health and Human Services. Next year, the employer mandate kicks in, and the White House has said that they estimate probably a minimum of 6 million will lose their coverage in that. So this is only beginning. Jim, and I guess if the White House estimates 6 million, it could be multiples of that. What happens as we go throughout this year and people who are thrown off their coverage and can't get other coverage, what happens to them? They're, they're going to flood the emergency rooms, aren't they? Well, I mean, look, let's be clear that the health care system wasn't working pretty well, very well for the going on for the last 30 years. The health care has gotten more and more expensive and less secure, and people were losing plans, and, uh, and employers were dumping people as well. Look, obviously, Obamacare, for the first three months, they'd like a mulligan. And the first year is going to be choppy. I think there's no doubt but about it. But I think how me, people, Jim, I, think how I, people I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I have to ask yeah. you, okay, so what's changing? When, Obamacare hasn't done a thing for the cost of health care. Hasn't done a thing. It's, it's done something for the cost of health insurance, but not a darn thing for health care. Health care costs aren't, aren't slowing down. They're still rising. Well, look, we're, we're going to have to wait and see what happens with Obamacare in this, because it is just starting. But we have to move from essentially a pay for procedure health care system to a pay for performance health care system. Obamacare takes some of those initial steps in doing it. I think there's more that needs to be done on this area. But health care costs for 30 years have been out of control. It's increased faster right. than triple inflation right. for right. 30 Peter, years. I mean, there's Peter, been a problem. Peter, the, the CBO yeah. uh, scores some of these things. And what they've done since, since uh, the, the, the health care bill was signed into law, they continue to increase the cost that's going to cost Americans. I've got to guess you guys put a, yeah. put a number to it. Where are you now? 
No, I mean, I, I think that's exactly right. And here's the problem, Eric. This is another example of social engineering, uh, where a group of smart people are going to redirect 20% of the economy, and they're going to do things that defy basic economics. So we're going to increase right. demand for health care services by getting 30 million people uninsured in the insurance system, but actually by increasing demand, we're going to cut costs. It doesn't right, but work it was, that way. 30 and years ago, it was 8% of the economy. Now it's 20% of the economy, and it's eating up wages, and it's sending jobs overseas. But what's I mean, changing? Yeah, but that's Something changing. Not changing. Not, there's changing. nothing changing. Yeah, go ahead, Peter. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's nothing changing. I mean, the one group that likes this, and this is sort of the dirty little secret of, of uh, Obamacare, while people are losing their coverage, the health insurance industry loves Obamacare. Price Waterhouse just far. came out with a study. <laughs> Uh, I would. Price Waterhouse just came out with a study and says as a result of Obamacare by 2020, they anticipate health company revenues will grow by $200 billion. All right, let's look we, at, we, look we, at the we stock need, market. We need to move on to the next topic. We, we talked about it. 55 new laws are going to kick into effect uh, starting next year. A lot of them are going to increase our taxes. Peter, let's start with you. It's estimated $54 billion tax increase to Americans. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is classic what happens in Washington, D.C. Both parties do it, unfortunately, and that is they're not going to do this without getting paid to do this. They put together a tax extender like an R&D tax credit, for example. They extend it for two years. Why do they not extend it for five years or ten years or make it permanent? Because they want to turn it into an annuity. They want the high-tech industry in that particular case to come by, give them campaign contributions, hire family members as lobbyists. It's horribly destructive for the economy, but it's great for the political class in Washington, D.C. Um, uh, Jim, one of the, one I, of the areas that, that <laughs> are being cut is the green energy businesses, tax, tax incentives to them. I don't necessarily have a problem with that, but there are a lot of the other things. Homeowners, teachers, college students, and others, their taxes are going up. So, look, I don't want to defend... They're, they're obviously too busy to pass them uh, last year. Uh, look... The problem is this. It's not that they want to get campaign contributions. That's not the reason why. The, the reason why is this. Everything gets scored by CBO, and these tax extenders, they cost a certain amount of money. And if you extend them for five years or ten years, which they should do, they need to find offsets for them. So instead, they extend them for one year or two years so they can find fewer places where they need to cut spending. It is ridiculous, but it is the way we do finances in Washington. It, it takes away a lot of assuredness that businesses have that these tax credits and will, will be there. But that's the reason they do it. This is the way we do scoring here in Washington. Peter, final thought. I yeah, I mean, honestly, a Congress never pays attention to the CBO. They don't base their policies on the CBO. Why would they well, do that? Well, we have in this pay area? go as a law. They have to. They have to. Yeah, but but they find ways around it all the time. That's the bottom line. I mean, to think that it's this a lot is easier just when you do policy? it one year at a time than when you do five years, and it's a big number. That's why they do it one year right, at a time. Right, but this is the one it's easier area to get small men. I'm not defending them. Yeah. It's just the way it's done. I worked there for 12 years. That's the way it gets done. It's lousy, but that's how it gets done or doesn't get done. Well, I think there's a larger explanation that relates to how Washington works, which is you don't get paid in terms of getting campaign contributions. Lobbyists don't mm -hmm. get hired if problems are solved. All right, there so you, you go. keep a tax extender going. That's the way the world works. That's the way it works, especially in D.C. You got to keep your eye on those lobbying firms. Remember, there was going to be no lobbyists in the White House. We're going to have to leave it there. Coming up next, right here in Hannity. There are